Paul Harrell. Weekdays from 4 to 6. Learn more at paulharrell.com. Hey folks, uh, welcome to the program. Thanks so much. Hour number two earlier this uh, earlier this afternoon, I got to sit down and talk with Congressman Rick Crawford about what happened in Washington, D.C. Uh, we're going to go now to a recording of that interview. This was recorded at uh, 1230 Central Time. Uh, enjoy. Congressman Rick Crawford is back with us. Rick, thanks so much for calling in, sir. You bet. Glad, to, glad I could join you. Uh, I know it's been a crazy morning. Uh, first of all, are you okay? Oh, sure. I wasn't out there, and, and uh, I'm very familiar with the facility. I've played baseball, a congressional uh, baseball game uh, before, and I just didn't happen to be out there today. And, and so um, I didn't see anything firsthand, but I started watching about 7.15, 7.30 when this started breaking on the news and have just been pretty much, uh, you know, transfixed since then and uh, watching things develop. It was Congressman Scalise uh, who who did get shot. I understand two of his staff members also got shot along with, uh, I believe, two Capitol Police officers. Uh, do you have any uh, updates or, I mean, do you know about his condition or anything? He is in stable condition. Uh, there are Two uh, Capitol Police officers that were uh, wounded, neither one of them seriously, uh, nothing life-threatening. I, I don't mean to imply that it's not serious, but it's not life-threatening. Uh, one of them has, was shot in the foot and will require some surgery on that foot. Um, and then there was a, uh, a staffer. One of the staffers was uh, worked for Roger Williams, from uh, congressman from Texas. Um, Roger Williams was injured. He was not shot, but he um, took some shrapnel as a result of, of a bullets close by him, and so he he has, uh, sustained some injuries as well. Again, nothing serious, nothing life threatening for him. And um, probably the worst injury is uh, a young man that was uh, um, works for Tyson. He's actually a legislative affairs consultant for Tyson, and he was shot twice: uh, once in the chest, once in the mm. In the torso, um, the good news is he, you know, apparently missed his vitals. They're going to have to do a follow-up surgery on uh, one of the wounds is uh, in the lung, and so, but he is in stable condition as well. So, uh-huh. the only fatality uh, that we can say is the assailant was uh, he died from the wounds that he suffered. Yeah. Uh, in fact, the Capitol Police uh, returned fire. And, and their action saved lives, no question about it. And uh, he was he was evacuated and succumbed to his wounds later in the hospital. I, I've listened to some of the audio because, uh, you know, someone heard shots and they started recording a video. And, you know, we don't see anything, but we can certainly hear just uh, a plethora of gunfire. Uh, it sounds, I mean, you know, it sounds just really, really uh, horrific. Um, what's security like now? Uh, I mean, have you been briefed on anything about uh, what what's going to happen next? Well, you know, we have a pretty tight security protocol as it is, and so what this has done, I mean, emotions are kind of running high right now. People are a little on edge. Um, what we don't want to do, and I think the Speaker is very forthrightly uh, taking this position, he convened the House, uh, made the announcement that we would adjourn for the day, and but that we were we're back in business tomorrow. We're not going to cower, and uh, mm-hmm. we're not going to allow this type of activity to shut down, uh, you know, operations of the government. Or you know, we're we're just not going to allow people to 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 claim that kind of victory. We this is not who we are. And I think the speaker and 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 the minority leader Pelosi both agreed on that. In fact, she followed his remarks and said she identified herself with the speaker's remarks. That almost never happens. Yeah. And so what you had was a rare uh, moment of comity uh, between between uh, the speaker and the minority leader, and this body has – and this moment has come together. And we're going we're gonna to kind of let the dust settle a little today, but tomorrow we're back in session, and we are going forward with the congressional baseball game. We're not going to be uh, dissuaded or cowed into, uh, you know, not participating in that worthwhile event. It's a very a collegial event. It raises a lot of money for folks uh, in the area. It's, it's uh, you know for at-risk youth here in the in the D.C. area, and um, they'll raise well over six hundred thousand uh, dollars this year for this effort. And so we're not going to be dissuaded on that. And so we're we're trying to get people out. 
That's good. And I suspect that it'll motivate even more support for this event. Yeah. Yeah, we're talking with Congressman Rick Crawford. Uh, of course, we had uh, this uh, this shooting uh, today in Washington, D.C., and so that's what we're covering, folks, if you're just joining us. Um, really glad that uh, really glad that you're okay. Um, uh, obviously, uh, you said you have, you know, have you participated in the baseball game before? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. So I like to play baseball and, of course, play in the congressional football game as well. And, you know, this is not something that uh, it's certainly you don't expect this kind of thing. Uh, it, it's outrageous is what it is. I mean, I've heard people say, well, it's tragic. Tragic is something that's, uh, you know, an avoidable, an unavoidable accident, maybe. Uh, maybe, you you know, you, you got, um, you know, somebody died of cancer, and that's tragic. This was a deliberate, outrageous assault. Um, and, and, and so it's beyond tragic. It's, it's, uh, it's, there's a deliberate uh, act here that, um, you know, and, and, you know, look, I, I've said and, and I still say, uh, you know, we got to be careful about uh, ascribing motives here and uh, trying to uh, make assertions that may or may not be true. Mm-hmm. But broadly speaking, um, it just seems that as shocked as I am and as shocked as everybody else particularly around here in this, you know, this, this Capitol Hill uh, family that we have, really. I mean, there's, there's about 10,000 people. It's like a small town, the Capitol complex. Yeah, it is a shock. On the other hand, I don't know that we should be all that shocked. When you, when you given the, the, the tone the, that exists, the, the, the political rhetoric. It's anti-Trump, the cultural rhetoric anti-Trump hysteria is what I would describe some of this. Well, it's, it's just anti-Congress. It's anti you know, I, you know, I've got to have my way, and if you're not doing what I want, then I'm going to act out. Well, we're seeing this. I mean, um, all you got to do is just look at look at Facebook pages of members of Congress, and the vitriol that is on display is is just unbelievable. And so, um, what's the next logical progression? So you know, you're 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 accosted in in public settings, and that's happened. I, I've got colleagues up here that have had physical altercations at town halls, and so. You see the steady progression, right? You go from, from you know, just you know, ugly coffee shop talk to now we're putting this stuff up on Facebook and Twitter, and we're making, we're, we're trolling members' families and children, and uh, making outrageous statements, and then now we're going to engage physically uh, in public settings. Well, you know, it stands to reason this is the next logical progression that I, there's an assault. You're right. I you mean, see, and and. It just needs to stop. And and what, what's happened here is you had a guy, I don't care what his political affiliation was. It's the same thing with Gabby Gifford. I don't care what his motivation or his political affiliation. These two individuals attempted to deny the humanity of these two individuals. These two members of Congress ceased to be human in this person's eyes. And in the, in, in the case of the shooter in, in, the, in the Arizona, those members of Congress cease to be human. And I can tell you this, we all have family and friends, loved ones. And, you know, this is, uh, Steve Scalise is a friend of mine. I mean, this is not an abstract thing. I mean, we're talking about, hey, this is a good man who, who has a, a wife and children at home that are anxious for him to come home. And then you've got some wacko who is amped up on political hate to such a degree that he would act in this manner, mm-hmm. and and that, where does that come from? And and this is not reflective of the better nature I of agree. the United States of America. I, I I think it has to be pointed out. I mean, okay, look at Kathy Griffin. Look at the you know the severed head of Donald Trump. Look at what's happening. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, a theater in the park or whatever in New York, where the New York Times just mm-hmm. up their contribution. You have. You know, you have Donald Trump being essentially murdered on stage. You know, his his wife, uh, who is, uh, you know, Melania lookalike, she speaks speaks with a Slavic accent, you know, crying over his dead body. I, I don't think it's a stretch to say that what happened today, that there is some correlation between the environment, the rhetoric, the frenzy that's going on. Uh, I, I mean, would you agree with that, that there's maybe some correlation with all that? Well, I, I I won't draw uh, any kind of connection with 
the, the Kathy Griffin phenomenon, that in and of itself is vile. And, and I, I mean, I want to I want to view these as a separate, okay. separate, isolated incidents, because, I, look, I don't want to get into um, an issue where we now we're, we're looking at this through a political lens and a political lens only. But but the, but the fact is that there are there are Democrat colleagues here in Washington that that they came to the floor today and we had a, we had a closed door meeting, a security briefing. They came and expressed their concerns. They're getting death threats. Okay, so that's legitimate for them. To, I get them. Heck, so if I'm getting them, why? Who, you know, why is it unreasonable to think that they're uh, not getting them? And the fact of the matter is, we all get them. And w- however they're being generated, and and un- whatever the conditions are and that motivates an individual to threaten an elected official's life, I don't care if it's the president, and I don't care if it's a U.S. senator or U.S. congressman or the mayor of of you know you know any town USA. Those individuals are serving their fellow man. They are human beings and U.S. citizens, and yet this kind of thing is going on. So, I mean, I, I, yes, I agree. To, you know that, that what you said about Kathy Griffin crossed the line, no question. What's going on with the with the uh, the, the Shakespeare in the park crossed the line, no question about it. What happened today? My goodness, this more than crossed the line. Uh, this was an attempt on lives uh but but again this is this is not unique to strictly these republican elected officials because i i have to say that you know my colleagues on the other side of the aisle are also receiving these kinds of threats Mm. and and so i just want to make sure that that people understand that these these political um attitudes are pervasive on either side and it and it gets so amped up, and if you think about it, you know you turn on the on the news, turn on the news out uh, on the, on the Fox or CNN or MSNBC in the evening in particular, and those those political pundits are doing everything they can to gin up this kind of political rhetoric and work people into a fury, and and this is the result. Now, in it, it, one side or the other, makes no difference. But the, but, the, but the the end result is this is what we're seeing, and it's just absolutely unacceptable. Yeah, I mean, you certainly would hope that uh, you know some of the stuff. Uh, I mean, specifically what I've seen on CNN uh, the last couple of months. Uh, you know, I, I would say there's a correlation, especially when we start looking into this particular shooter. Uh, you know, and, and and where he leans and that sort of thing, and. Um, and how devastated he was by the results of the election last November. That, but, but, but I, I really appreciate your measured tone on this, uh, especially you know being on the ground in D.C. And I'm, I'm sure uh, uh, just a lot of people maybe. Hopefully, this will be a wake up call. I mean, ho- ho- that that would be well, I, an encouraging thing. I hope so. And like you know, you know, when we prayed about this this morning, we hope that, and, and it's our prayer that, you know, something good can come from this evil. And that's always what we hope for as as Christians, as believers, that you know that you know whatever happens, that that somehow something good can come out of something bad, and and we hope that this is uh, you know a wake up call that you know you don't have to agree with me, Paul, you know, and you and I have not agreed a hundred percent on everything, and I consider you a friend, and I have a yes. lot of friends that I disagree with, and that's okay, but you know I, I just ask, and you've never done this, and. and it, don't rob me of my humanity, and you've never done that, and my friends at home have never done that, whether they uh, agree with me or disagree with me. But there are people out there who daily seek to rob me and other members of, of public service. And I'm not even talking about members of Congress. I'm talking about public servants that they set about to deliberately deny them their humanity. And that is a sad state of affairs. And you know what? It's not just political. You see it in the discourse in the marketplace. You see it in the way people treat their waiter if their order's wrong, you know. Or it, it's not it's it's not uncommon to see people act out if they if uh, if if they didn't get exactly yeah. you know the order just right or whatever. I mean, look, what where are we as a people that we can't conduct ourselves with any more civility and with any more respect for our fellow man than to act that way and to treat people with that level of discourtesy? Yeah. I mean, you you raise really valid points. I mean, that's exactly the, the. I mean, 
we do see this kind of slow decay and it is it can be everywhere like you said you know you're ordering uh, you know uh, food at a restaurant you treat your waiter you know like they're less than human they're subhuman and you know that can uh, just kind of permeate into every aspect of life and you know it's a it's a it's a big yada 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 but you know you end up you know trying to murder some congressmen on a baseball field and um well and, listen we all we all came from the same place i mean look uh, it doesn't matter where we are in life today. I mean, I've had some really crappy jobs, Paul. I'll just be honest with you. You know, I've, I've worked hard. I've worked in a feed mill. Uh, you know, I, I've worked in a feed lot. Uh, I've done some really nasty things in life to try and, and, and make ends meet. And and so, you know, the, the, the person that I am today, I mean, and I'm, I'm, I'm blessed and, and fortunate to be able to, and I, I've, I've, been blessed and I you know I want to help people uh, you know really kind of uh, realize some economic prosperity in their lives and and and, and I'm making a contribution or I'm, I'm attempting to but just because you know the national media gins up this anti-congress sentiment which is what's driving this whole thing on either side of it the national media are constantly berating members of Congress to such a degree that this individual thought it would be a good idea to go and and take a congressman's life. That that that's what that's where we're at. Look, Steve Scalise is a good honorable man. There's no reason in the world just because he's a member of Congress doesn't mean he didn't come up through the, the ranks just like everybody else. Yeah. And uh, you know he he's 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 been a hardworking man, and and uh, he's making a future for his family just like everybody else strives to. So where is it? I mean, I, I'm just having a hard time understanding why. I don't care what side of the aisle, left, right, down the middle. I don't care where you fall on the political spectrum. If you're if you are are donating or are, 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 uh, offering your a, a portion of your life, however short that may be, maybe two years, maybe twenty years, you're offering yourself for public service. Just take that into consideration before before you attack a member of Congress, either rhetorically or in this case literally. Think about that. Before you attack your state representative or your state senator or your or your JP or your um, your mayor or your city councilman, think about the time that they take away from their family so that they can go and contribute something back to the community that they love and they're serving. And if you'll if you'll just pause for a second before you form those negative opinions and before it it, it metastasizes to a fury, then maybe. Maybe we can we can stop this kind of behavior. And look, we're not all going to agree, and I'm not asking to. I'm not asking you to agree with me on everything. Mm-hmm. But I am asking us to share this common humanity that is reflective and emblematic of what makes America great. That's what I'm asking people to do. Yeah. We're talking with Congressman Rick Crawford, uh, and uh, we're about out of time, sir. But I originally you know, scheduled to talk about some other things, but of course the news of the day, the shooting in D.C., it kind of— uh, has you know derailed us from what we were going to talk about, but I, I do want to get a brief comment on uh, the Democrats. Seem like they are going to be trying to put up somebody to challenge you in two thousand nine, uh, two thousand eighteen. Uh, Mike mm-hmm. Nelson from Arkansas County, uh, he says he wants to get in the race, and he criticized you according to reports about your vote to repeal Obamacare, uh, and of all things, uh, to actually make U.S. sixty three interstate uh, triple nickel. Uh, I just wanted to get your real quick comments on that. I thought, I mean, those are things a lot of people wanted you to do. Well, look, I, there should be no surprise that I vote to repeal Obamacare because uh, everybody knows that it's uh, it's a failing, flawed policy that was built on false promises, and it's time to go. So that's number one. Number two, on triple nickel. Really? You're going to criticize that? We we saved the taxpayers $50 million. I mean, small victories, uh, but $50 million may not sound like a whole lot in Washington, but to us back here in Was- in Arkansas, that's a lot of money. Yeah. So we can now take that $50 million and apply it somewhere else where we can actually improve another road so that we don't have to go through, you know, the bureaucratic red tape in Washington to satisfy a $50 million uh, detour so that we can achieve interstate status. No, we, we went about it in, in, I think, a very thoughtful uh uh, elegant way, and uh, I can't imagine anybody would criticize that. But you know that that just knock yourself out if you want to <laughs> if you want to criticize that type of work. Go ahead. That kind of shows us what you're about. I don't know who this guy is. Never met him. Never heard of him. 
but he's he's entitled to his opinion and, and you know god bless america yeah there you go god bless america well i just want to remind the audience the last time you faced a democrat opponent you won by 30 points uh, I don't expect things to change uh, too much from that. So, uh, Congressman Rick Crawford, I do appreciate it, sir. I'm glad that you're safe, uh, and uh, I appreciate your comments today. Yes, sir, Paul. Thanks for the time. All righty. You, you guys be safe.